um, you uh, I read somewhere on internet I don't know you talked about uh, music and the sacred state for it like um, where it takes you to some um, um, and as I know like a psychedelic moment how do you see that uh, which was in music as we, as we look like a tool for some religious experience how do you see is it possible to uh, connect that s part of music together with a social message well of, yeah absolutely of course I mean you know I, I'm not a I don't believe in God but I mean people praying together in a church or in a synagogue or in a mosque that's also a social activity that's like music fulfills that same role you know like it, it's it is a sacred activity you know and anything we live in such a dehumanized age and we were we were all born into a dehumanized age that it's sad but it's like to even save these little human rituals that we have you know like that's Live music is one of those rituals, you know? Like, uh, you, that, that's why we call what we do folk music, you know? Um, like, it's it's in that tradition. It's like... Storytelling. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's a thing that, that people do because it's a thing that people do, you know what I mean? It's not like a special thing, you know? We're not special. We, just, uh, like, we feel like we're working within a tradition of musicianship that... Uh, that's, uh, you know, being deteriorated day after day after day after day. Yes. So yeah. Okay, maybe we we can take a musical pause and uh, and then we'll be right back in studio. Da mēs am atpakaļ jā, studijā. Šon mums ir uh, viesis no Kanādas, Efrems Menuks, un uh, arī tā uh, grupa Silmant Zain, un mums stāsies Grīvs Mēbelēs. Par proms vakarā, es domāju, mēs visi tiksimies, būs vienreizē iespēja pielīties. Uh, Nu, es cik saprotu, būs uh, komunikācija no um, grupas puses, un tas būs tāds um, labs uh, prāta piedzīvojums. Um, so, Efrem, uh, uh, can I ask you a question about... Uh, uh, you, you once said that you take music uh, very seriously, and that regards everything connected with music, the way it's distributed, the, 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 the way the tour is happening. Is is it hard uh, to do that? Be, um, because I uh, I mean, it's more easy, maybe for uh, for a uh, for some bands just to get money for what they do and uh, really don't care how they are presented or uh, they don't have some maybe creative freedom. Is it hard uh, to walk your own uh, path? So no, not your own, but I mean, uh, not to go the. Uh, most easiest way it's not very hard you know and I mean like our uh, our sort of approach on the uh, you know anything you do in life is gonna have to involve money because that's the world we live in you know and that's a shitty thing and we hate it you know like most people so you know but then if you accept that fact then I think for bands too many bands just go for like the short money the quick money the easy money um, and they end up making music that doesn't mean anything, you know? Uh, for a lot of bands, it doesn't make any difference because what they make music about doesn't really mean anything in the first place, you know? But if you are making music that's trying to be about something, then all you have to do is think about the decisions that you make at any given point and decide that you're more interested in doing this for a long time, you know? And... Uh, you know, you reach a certain level where you feel lucky because you don't have to work a job anymore. Um, and you're, you you can earn an honest living playing music. So it'd be like the analogy, the analogy we've used before is like, uh, you know, my grandfather owned his own small little grocery store in Winnipeg, Canada, you know? And he did that for his whole life. And he like raised my father and raised my aunt and earned an honest living. You know, that's how we approach our band. It's just like, you know, it's not, we're not gonna be the biggest band in the world. We, we, we don't wanna be the biggest band in the world. We just sort of move ahead slowly, you know? Um, and we'll keep doing that until, until we feel like the music that we're making isn't valid anymore, or we can't stand each other anymore, or, you know. Um, so on that level, it's not hard at all. You just have to think about it, you know? Um, Yeah. Um, 
what will happen when uh, maybe Silman Zion becomes a really uh, big band and it, it becomes like a pattern, you know, like from Gibson's book, Pattern Recognition, when like I think that's why people hate the name post rock because it became like a pattern that could be used for uh, other purposes and um, like a trendy thing. Um, what if uh, that happens so and then when, uh, when people say this is the next big thing we should follow um, what they're doing? And but I mean that that'll never happen, you know. Like that's the it. Um, you know, I mean the history of this band is interesting because you know three of us were in the band Godspeed You Black Emperor and the decisions that Godspeed made as a band early on um, you know sort of closed these doors to everybody you know forever you know what I mean like so it'll never happen like at this point at this point with Mad Zion it's like people know what we're about you know and uh, you know we'll, we'll never you know we'll never get a some sort of glowing super hyped review on pitchfork or yeah. whatever you know that's not going to happen and so and that it's sad but that's 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 what the music industry is now you know like um so it, it it'll never happen that we're like a super trendy thing you know if it did happen i i, I uh i don't know what we would do um but that's because i'm sure that it'll never happen you yeah know? it's pretty hard to happen if you don't want it yeah, I also have to. I have the, the post rock term. I've always said the term post rock because, uh, you know, a, a, any band I've ever been in has been about like some form of rock. You know, like like yeah. uh, it's so this post rock thing has always been. I mean, it's like I believe in in loud music. You know, not only loud music. I, I like quiet music as well. But you know, like. Uh, where I got raised and the type of music I listened to growing up. I mean, it was like, it was always loud rock music, you know, whether it was punk rock or, you know, some other version of rock. So post rock is always like, I've always hated that term. And um, um, you mentioned the uh, decisions that Gatspeed made. Um, I think the people who listen to your music know that you have a certain uh, opinions about uh, how your music can be used and I just want to ask this question about the lost TV show because I know that people uh, all are curious um, uh, was, was it because you sell the uh, I don't know I, as I understood you you gave your music uh, for uh, for a lost TV show and uh, some people said um, that it, it's of course it differs from the your other views that you didn't allow to use your music for some commercial projects right I mean, uh, with Godspeed and also with Mad Zion, uh, you know, the thing for us has always been we won't let someone use our music if we don't like what they're doing, you know? So some of us in Mad Zion watch the television program Lost, you know? I mean, it, f for a television program, it's a good tele. I mean, we enjoy yeah. it, you know? Like, it's uh, a hardcore TV show, I would say. Well, yeah, the, I don't... The good I, way is that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not easy chewing. Yeah, so. yeah no, it's... I mean, so yeah, we watch TV like everyone else. We don't live uh, in a little uh, political bunker somewhere, you know, with our hands over our ears. So that was the first thing. It was like, and then the second thing is like the offer itself was to use seven seconds of one of our songs, and it was a song that, in all our years of touring and talking to people, no one had ever mentioned the song as a song that they you know oh this song meant a lot you know you hear stuff like that you know so that was that made it easy also um and it's not a song that any of us were attached to so it didn't have like any sort of you know anyway so that made it easier and so basically it came down to we got offered this amount of money to use seven seconds of a song that we didn't particularly like very much um, to be used in a television commercial for the program that was mostly going to be on the internet on their web page and would air a few times over the course of two weeks so for us it was sort of like our engagement with the industry has always been super pragmatic and so on that level it was like okay yeah we would be pretty stupid to say no to that but saying all that with Mount Zion we turned down many thousands of dollars every year of offers like that, you know? So part of it too for us was knowing, well, you know, we've 
deserve the right to every now and then, you know, say yes to something like that. Um, but I don't think we'll ever do anything like that again. You know, it was a decision we made at the time, but I don't expect we'll be saying yes again to anything like that. Um, uh, you sometimes um, criticize uh, Celine Dion or you too or Bono. I, I mean, not uh, as a as a what they do, maybe in a, as a mythology behind them. I think maybe, and um, the same way you you mentioned that you're a uh, fans of Led Zeppelin. Don't you see? Wouldn't you agree that there's a certain connection? I think maybe for me, I think the same mythology be behind Led Zeppelin and you two kind of very similar as a big rock stars um, and uh, all that myth that's going behind that and and, and and industry actually behind those bands. For sure, although there are differences, you know. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, what I wanted to ask you, uh, when is that moment when you can say, oh, I just care for the music, I don't care about the other stuff, and... and um, that, that moment is all the t I mean, you can do that anytime, you know? Like, I, I get really impatient with, with bands who present some sort of ideal, you know, whether it's a political ideal or a social ideal, and they present that on one hand, and the, on the other hand, all they're interested in is being famous and rich, right? So you too, you know, Bono is walking around the world pronouncing everywhere about, like, you know, poverty in Africa and, you know, sort of like doing show off -y campaigns about, you know, he did that red visa card thing. Do you know this thing? It was like you got this visa card and bought these certain items of clothing in certain stores that were the red brand and then some percentage of that went towards feeding people in Africa. Oh, I don't know, but I, c I can understand what, what And then it turns out that like the entire budget of this program went to just paying for itself, so no money was going anywhere. I mean, you know, that's a classic Bono move. I mean, Bono is straight up just either a fool or just an asshole. So, you know, and let... <laughs> um, so that's the thing that always gets under my skin and stuff like that when it's presented as one thing and then and in reality it's this other thing and there you know if you're not if a band isn't sort of presenting itself as an uh, idealistic venture then I'm a, I'm a lot less troubled by whatever decisions they make in their you know I'm not like a super judgmental person right you know I just I like fake is fake right um and so, you know, if you care about music and you love music, then of course you're going to be offended by people pretending to also be caring about and loving music, you know, or, or loving the, you know, the, the most precious aspect of music, you know. So, yeah, that, that stuff bothers me immensely.